Hello. Welcome everyone. It's time to start this session so we are not moving into your valuable break time afterwards. So this is uh, Drupal 8 Multilingual Site Building Hacks. I'm Gabor Hoichi and my co-speaker is Vijayash Chandra Mani. There. Um, although it's the two of us uh, speaking here and we are representing the uh, what the team did there's a lot of people who contributed to this initiative. So if you take a look at the list, it's pretty impressive, but it's actually not the complete list. This would be the complete list. So it's an amazing number of people who participated in the initiative. We include everyone in this list who ever commented on an issue on the multilingual queue. So this is over 1,300 people on the multilingual initiative. I think it's pretty incredible. And we are not done yet. So if somebody wants to get involved um, and not yet involved, uh, we are very happy um, to get you on board. We'll be here on Friday and on the weekend, so we are happy to involve you in the project. We need experience of all kinds. We need people testing UIs. We need people working on better UIs for things. We need people uh, writing tests for things, fixes uh, for major issues, etc. However, we did make a lot of progress in Drupal 8, and my colleague at Acquia, Jeffrey Maguire, summarized that very well in one of his sessions. And he said, multilingual in Drupal 8 is a huge business advantage, will save incredible amounts of time and money and it allows us to deliver better experiences than we were ever able to before. So basically he's saying that it's, it works better and you get the results faster, which is pretty incredible, I think. So it's been uh, work of these many people for uh, almost four and a half years at this point, and we made a lot of changes. But the high level summary of the changes is as follows. So we looked at how we handle your data and how can we know more about your data in terms of uh, multilingual or in terms of language in general. And then we looked at, based on that data, what can we do to help you build output um, with all kinds of dynamic needs that you have in your multilingual projects. And then based on the output, how can you put that into pages on the site so, uh, so you can make dynamic pages based on uh, multilingual needs. And we made most of the progress in terms of the data handling because that's where we focused our efforts. If we did not make enough progress in terms of output building or page building, that's a lot of opportunity for Contrib to move in that space. Uh, however, in terms of how the data is handled, it's very core to how Drupal works. So we really wanted to make sure to do that one right. So for that one, uh, we added language information and translation support to practically anything in Drupal that you manage. So we have language information on content, we have language information on menus, we have language information of the blocks that display the menus, and we have language information on the items that are in the menus. So we have language basically on every level in the system. And then we've added translation support as well. So you can not only translate your nodes as it was in Drupal 6, but you can also translate all kinds of other content in the system, user profile fields. You can translate blocks. You can translate menu items. You can translate all kinds of content with fields. And you can also translate all kinds of configuration in Drupal 8 core. We have built-in user interfaces and data for that too. So you can translate your site name. You can translate your blocks. You can translate your views like the empty text and the, and the labels and, and stuff in views, the pager text, etc. So we put translation support there as well. And we made the translation support for the software interface much better too. We automated uh, the translation of that from the community, so it now downloads automatically to your system. And we improved the user interface there as well. So I think that's the most important circle for Drupal 8 is that now we know the language of everything in your system um, to very granular pieces. So if you have a Spanish site and you create a 
new content type on the site in Spanish, and now you decide to make the site available in German as well, then you can translate it from Spanish to German, and we still support all the content types that Drupal, Drupal came with in English that we also translate to Spanish for you. So all the coexistence of all of those different languages is seamlessly managed. So now you have all the data in all of those languages, and some of them or all of them may have translations. It's kind of important to be able to build output based on that. And thankfully, there was a nice initiative in Drupal 8 called uh, Views in Core. And uh, they were very successful in getting views in core. And they were even more successful in getting a lot of things in, in core to be views. So a lot of built-in blocks in core are now powered off views. The front page in core is now a view. The node admin page is now a view. Your block administration page is now a view. It's kind of cool. So now you have all that data on your configuration and content, and now you have uh, all kinds of parts of pages, the main page content, and all kinds of blocks generated by views. Now you can use all the flexibility of views to filter the data for specific languages or display the data in, in some other language that you wanted, uh, another one that was found. So we have that flexibility built in there as well. And now that you have that output, you can put into pages, so that's where page building comes in. And Drupal 8 did not make a whole lot of progress in terms of page building. Uh, there's no panels in there. There's no uh, fancy layouting in there. But uh, blocks got a lot more uh, flexible. You'll see that in our demo. Um, we now have language on blocks, among other things. So you can have language visibility on blocks to hide and show uh, that, that output based on your conditions. So basically, you can use these three things in combination in core to have data in whatever language you want, to translate that data into whatever other language you want, and then use uh, views and other tools to pull that data out and display in whatever way you want. And then you can use blocks and language visibility to uh, push that display into uh, the part of the page that you needed it to be. So that's the functional overview of what we did in Drupal 8 core. And this is all built in in Drupal 8 core. There's no contributed modules involved. So how we did that is we looked at Drupal 7, which is the orange circles here, and we took locale module and broke it into two parts. So we said, OK, there's a base language service layer that we need that serves everything. So that's what handles assigning language to your data, uh, setting up all the languages, deciding what language is used on the page. Um, and we made all of those options even more flexible. So that's now a base service that's in, in, in its own module. And the interface translation features we broke out to the interface translation module and made that richer from Drupal 7 by automating translation downloads and making the user interface much easier to use and then putting in a lot more features there too. And then Drupal 6 also had content translation in core, which we deleted. There's no content translation module of, of the same type that we had in Drupal 6. That's not, the Drupal 6 and 7 that's not available anymore. Instead, we took the entity translation module from Contrib and put that into core and named that the content translation module. The reason for that is that allows us um, to store and manage the translations together and makes it very flexible for you to configure it however you want and then move between different configurations without needing migrations between your different models of data. So that's the, that was the most powerful way for us to support translations of all kinds of content um, on your system. And then there was the configuration translation problem that we did not solve in 7. And there was the i18 and module, which tried to provide that feature set. And then it required the variable module and all kinds of other glue modules like i18 and views and i18 and web form. And um, I don't know what, there's several other modules um, that you don't need anymore in Drupal 8 because we have the configuration translation solution in 8 that works very closely with the configuration system in Drupal 8. It's deployable. You can QA your translations, et cetera. So it's very well integrated into the um, deployment-friendly configuration system. So that's the high-level overview of the modules. And then the reality is that there's a lot of other modules that we took and put into core in whole or in parts. So we have the admin language detection module in core. We have a language fallback system for languages and interface translation, so you can have um, specialized versions of languages. 
we put in the, the title module, obviously, which used to be translating the title field itself is now not required because we support all the fields. And then all these glue modules from I18N we put into core as well. And then there were several other smaller changes like transliteration from machine names and all kinds of other small nice touches that you'll notice when you look around core. And that's, I think, not surprising for four and a half years of development. But when it really comes powerful is when you combine these features with all the other great things that went into Drupal 8 core. So that's where I want to ask Vijay to come over and um, show you a few things. Okay, so uh, so the main like Gabriel explained, we have like three different set of modules um, in terms of functionality, like content translation and uh, configuration translation, which works with the CMI uh, initiative, like the whole configuration system, and then we have interface translation, which is something like we had in Drupal uh, Seven. Uh, so what we are trying to show now is basically we just trying to uh, uh, set up a small website like a game site where um, we're gonna we're gonna display you know like a few games and uh, we're gonna show uh, how to review it and also like how can you set up the whole site uh, without adding any contributor module and you can translate them into different language. Uh, first, uh, this site is a small simple site. Um, so the first page, uh, the landing page, we are planning to set it up like a contact us uh, page with a contact us form and. And then from there, you can navigate through the menus and you can go to the different uh, game page or my account page from there. So first, I'm going to uh, change the home page uh, to slash contact. So again, the contact uh, is a module that comes with the D8 core. Um, so this is the uh, general, it's a, sorry, out of box uh, contact test form. Um, uh, as you know, in like D7, uh, in D8, also the home page is always set to slash node. So I'm going to change that to slash contact. And yeah, the, the site might look something like this. Um, so now we are going to use this form as a contact us form instead of website feedback. So I'm going to change the title to Contact us. So yeah, so the, we changed the form now. Uh, the title is fine, but we don't want to display this just this form. Uh, we want to have a form uh, that people can fill. Also, we, they can find us. So we want to put some address and map as a main content, and we put the contact us in the site. So, so here is where the translation of the blocks comes in. So, like it's a translation, but for now it's just a single, you know, like a site with just one language, just English. We haven't started translating anything. Uh, so we're going to swap the main content, like the contact us main content, as a site block, and add a new block, a custom block, with the address and map um, to the game store. So what we're showing here is the site building flexibility of uh, the new blocks features in Drupal 8. So let's say you want to have your contact information, which obviously will need to be multilingual, because if you want to have business, you need to have more like, as, ma as many people be able to understand what's going on, uh, how to get to contact you, and what we are doing here is to make that as the first point of um, information on the site, and that's uh, in the main content block on the page. So we are going to move that on the site, and we're going to get some nice information to people through our own 
text means. So you want to create a new main page content. So what we are showing here is block instances in Drupal 8. You can have multiple copies of your main page content and move that to the sidebar. So we are moving this main page content to the sidebar and then creating one for this page only. So that allows us to use a piece of content that, need, that would have been a piece of node in Drupal 7 to be displayed in a block, and then very neatly be able to move that around and translate if we want. And doing the same to the main page content block as well. So the two things you did now is you move the, you remove the, no, you did not remove. So you've added a new piece of block on the contact us page, yep. which as you may have seen can now be quick edited yep. and you wanted to make that full HTML, right? Yeah. So, so we have that contact us block we can go and make it full HTML. It is, but you pasted the markup into. Sure. So you can use this feature with uh, this full HTML block. You can use fieldable blocks, et cetera. And the neat thing about it is it has in-place editing as well as any other content in Drupal 8. So you can quick edit your block as well as your content. And you'll see soon that you can also translate this block. And then we have this form here that we wanted to move to the sidebar. Yeah. Uh... And we can use block visibility for that, which will allow us to have multiple copies of this block and show this main content in the sidebar and on other pages, show it as the main page. So what you can use this for is if you're building out your site and you have, you have uh, some rich type of content for locals in Catalan and Spanish, you can use that to, um, to provide them with that kind of information. And you can use separate blocks for if you are trying to build out the site in French and German, so maybe they are going to visit your site as well. You can use a different kind of block and show and swap those blocks based on different languages on the site. So that's why um, block visibility can be very handy. And block instances is very handy if you want to display the th same thing at different places on your site. So what we are showing here is we're moving the contact block, which is the main page, to the sidebar on this page, and on other pages we keep it as the main content, like this. Um, and right. so the rest of the pages still show the main page content. We need two instances of that block, and the other instance is going to show on every other page. So this is a very powerful sidebinding feature in Drupal 8 to use for, um, for uh, layouting your pages, and mixing with language support can be used to uh, provide separate features for different audiences. Yep. You want to go forward? Yeah. So uh, the next one is like we're gonna add a menu item, so we're gonna uh, display a, a note uh, before that. The note page. Yeah. yeah. Before that, I will change this to a uh, homepage. So basically, yeah, it's already a homepage. So if I go directly to the homepage, this? yeah, so it, it will be a homepage. Uh, so now we're gonna add um, slash note page as a game listing page. And for that, I'm going to add a menu item to the main navigation. Games. And then 
And what we are creating here in Drupal 8, technically, when we are creating menu items, are content entities. So these point to other content entities or other paths on the site. And when we get them created, then we'll have them have them uh, translatable and positionable as content entities in the menu. And then we can create another one for my account. And then we'll show you how to do fun things with menus and blocks and translations. Cool. So we now have this three item menu. We have some of them that only shows for logged in users, some of them shows for everyone. And that's a great menu. But what usually happens on a site, even in the small site with uh, game reviews, is you have languages that are not 100% copies of other languages. So you need to have some languages that share this menu and some other languages that don't. So I think we would need languages first for that, right? So we would need to set up the languages that we want to use for the site. Let's do interface translation at the same time. So we want to do interface translation and language so we can go faster. And then we'll have languages to play around with the blocks and the menus. Very good. Both content and interface translation. Okay, perfect. So that allows us to do a lot of fun things with this. So, so that's fine. So, um, so when we have when we have our languages to deal with, we can translate that block to however many languages we want. So let's add the languages first, and then we can swap out the blocks for different languages as well. So because Drupal 8 uses blocks for basically any part of the page, we can use language visibility to hide and show those blocks. So. If you want to have a menu for Catalan and Spanish and you want to have a totally different menu for Hungarian, let's say, then you can do that with language visibility on your menu blocks. So you can use a menu for several languages and then use another menu for other languages. So what we just did is we enabled language and interface translation modules and when we add a new language, then it automatically downloads interface translations from localizedrupal.org and then it's updating those translations uh, in our database as well. So that's what's going on right now. It's importing our, importing our translations. There's a percentage sign. It's not going very fast here, but it's a big translation. It's like 6,000 uh, translatable strings. So while that's going on, uh, we can talk about this happening um, automatically. If you don't want to have this happen automatically on your site, you can disable the automatic translation updates. And then later on, uh, you can uh, push uh, from your staging server to the live server all the updates that happen there and do the quality assurance testing on that server. So now we have one language, and let's add Catalan as well. And then we should be fine. We have prepared sites for every step of the demo in case it goes bad. So we have this side that al already has those two languages. Yeah. You want to go from here? Yeah. yeah. If it doesn't have the menu. Uh, so once, you, once we have these two languages, what we can do is to use language visibility, as you can see there, and say we want this menu only for, let's say this one was set up to be English and Hungarian, but locally probably would be a more likely uh, primary menu for Catalan. And then set up an entirely different menu for, uh, for other languages that we want. So what we did here is we did a main navigation that shows for English and Hungarian, and we did a menu that was a main navigation for Catalan. And we can set up the two menus entirely differently and then swap them out on the page based on language visibility. So if I quit out of the Catalan interface, because some of you would not understand Catalan, we can go to the block layout and see that we have two blocks. Uh, we have a main, main, main navigation block and a main navigation Catalan block, both of them. And instead of showing them both at once, what we do 
is for the main navigation, you've just seen it's limited to Hungarian and English. And for main navigation, Catalan, we limit to Catalan. So when you switch language on the site, it will be for English and Hungarian, this menu, and for Catalan, it will be a totally different menu. So you can combine menu translation and block visibility to have entirely separate menus for specific languages and or share menus between different languages and translate them. And what this demo also had in there is the translation of the menu items themselves. So that you can do easily on the menu interface, especially if we are not stuck in Hungarian and you're going to understand it, understand it better. Yeah. So if you go to the main menu itself, that's going to have all your links. And what's great about that is all the links have a translate tab on them, translate operation, summarizes which, which languages it is translated to. We are not using this menu for Catalan, so we did not bother translating this item to Catalan. We did bother to translate this item to Hungarian, though. And when, when we edit it, it shows that it that it is translated this way to Hungarian. So that's a very powerful way to combine translations on content entities with block visibility. And then you can do the same thing to blocks. So there's our block with that label. And you can go and edit the block. And then it has a translate tab as well. And of course, the blocks has their own translations, et cetera. So this applies to all kinds of content in your system that you create, that you place on the page, that you put in a menu, that you put on a user profile. You can go and translate to other languages. You want to show how we configure the translatability for this one? Yeah. So, so yeah, so I think I can go back to the first one. Um, so for, for configuring the tra content translation, uh, there is a setup under content lang you know content language and translation menu uh, here you can you can just define uh, oh, keep talking yeah define the different elements of uh, 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 that that you allow you said that you want to translate so for for blocks we just going to enable custom blocks and and, and in d8 the blocks also kind of like nodes like it's like you can create a different type of blocks and um, and then, yeah, un under the block types, you create a s different set of blocks for, uh, you know, which is a whole block type. And then when you enable the element, then it provides you option saying that you, if you want to enable for, for that element and all the fields under that element, and you can decide whether you want to translate all of them or you just want to disable only particular fields. Um, so some uh, fields, it makes sense to translate some of them it, you know, it's not something translatable, so you can just avoid those, or you can just leave it back. And then... At the same place, you may have noticed there's a custom menu link item as well, so the same place where you enable custom menu link translation, and the same place where you enable user profile translation, comment translation is a fun thing, um, um, et cetera, et cetera. So if you have use case for translating any of these things, then you can just go in here and, and uh, set them up. And I think we are now going to move over to content types. So, um, so let's say let's say you want to have let's say you want to have uh, actual games for review, which was the point of the site. So what we're going to do there is we're going to create a new game content type. And that's very easy. It's very similar to how you do in Drupal 7. The only big change here is we have new field types now. So we can do all kinds of crazy fields on games if we want. We can put date fields on them. We can put um, whatever we want. So once you go to add new field, there's this whole big list of things that we can deal with. And that includes and that includes email, Boolean, uh, comments themselves are a field, which you'll learn soon. How does that work? Taxonomy term reference, content reference, there's entity reference, supporting core, et cetera. And the good thing about all of these fields is all of them can vary by language. So you can create whatever field you want, and then you can vary that by language. 
So let's say I want this game thing and I want to have an image field, which I'm gonna actually reuse an existing field for that. Image is fine. So I'm gonna have games with images on them and all the settings are okay for me. I don't care about the details here. And then I want to have a number field that is an integer that would have an estimated price of this game. So people reviewing this game have an idea of how much it costs. There's one, one of them is fine. And we want to provide that in uh, euros. And then we want to have whatever other field you want. So basically, you can build out this content type with all the, all the built-in field functionality. And now we want to put reviews on games. And reviews, they should take ratings, right? Because otherwise, what, what, why it makes sense to have reviews on games. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a comment type for reviews, which is also possible in Drupal 8. So we add a new comment type. Let's say it was a review. Very good. We're going to target that on content in general and save that. And now we have a review comment type. And what we need in reviews, of course, is the rating. So we manage fields on them and we add ratings, which is going to be a list field for integers. We say rating. And they're going to be able to select from one to five. Very good. Limit them in one. So very easy to get around with all these, uh, all these fields for you to build off of. And now we can just need to relate this comment type to that content type. So what we'll do is we go to content types, uh, big game, manage fields, and we say games want to take reviews. So games want to take comments that are reviews. And then we have, a, we have an option to select which type of comment it is. It is a review type of comment. So very easy to build this out and then all of these are content entities that are related to each other. So now you can go to your configuration and say which one you want to actually translate. So you go to your content language and translation and you have your comment types and you can make your reviews multilingual as in support translations. Or you can say you don't want to support translation on, on, on reviews, but you want, to, you want to make them in a sensible default language. So let's say when people submit reviews on things, they will submit that in the page of the language, right? So we'll say it's the interface language selected for the page that should be the default for the review. And we don't expose the language selector for the user because it would just confuse them. So it's very, very flexible to set up how language works for your content. So we say that's defaults to the interface language and then we want to do similar for content, but we want to actually translate our games. So our game content type, and that's where all the fields come in that are supported on nodes. So we have a title field. We track the author by language, which means who translated it. We track the time of the authoring, when it was changed, whether it's promoted to the front page. Um, we track separate aliases for them. We have separate body text. And then some fields, like images, we have subfield level detail for them. So you can say, I want to share the same image file because games basically have the same photograph, somebody playing the game, or if it's a board game, like in our case, it's gonna be a box of the game. That's international, mostly. And then the alt text and the title text we want to translate. And then the price is a good question. If you want to uh, keep as a unified price, maybe you wanna do that, then you can keep it that way. So, and reviews, we're not gonna take them separate language, we're gonna take them uh, in the same language as the user wanting to submit them. So it's very easy to plug in all those things that you just click together on the field UI to the multilingual settings. And now you have a whole input system for games and reviews and it's multilingual and we were done it with that in like five minutes. So if we wanna add new games, we go to our content admin page and we say add content. We wanna add a game. I really like the Hanabi game. I don't know if you know it. 
submit that in English. I could upload an image now, I'm not gonna do that. Um, let's say it's 20 euros. Um, so now I have this game, and now I have uh, comments on, it, on them which are reviews, so I can say, I really like this game. So it's a five. Really like it, then submit that. And so the multilingual experience around this basically is I can go and translate this game to however many languages I want here, go in and translate it to Hungarian and Catalan, and then on the reviews themselves, we track the language that they were submitted with. Unfortunately, Drupal Core does not have a user interface to list comments by language, so we are not going to be able to do that. One more fun thing possible here is although we have the list of reviews saying reviews, kind of a problem here is that our review submission form still says add new comment. That's not nice. It's not possible to configure in core, but you are at a talk titled Drupal 8 Multilingual Hacks. So we're going to use a good feature in Drupal 8 to uh, make that uh, customized. So what happens in Drupal 8 is you can change English interface text if you want. So you go to your user interface translation and that's all the things, all the source strings uh, found on the pages and that's where you will find add new content, add new comment. You can filter for that. And there's of course, this is the Hungarian translation so I'm going to change that to uh, to the Hungarian version of uh, review. Um, save that. So now I have it properly saying the Hungarian version, but there's no option for English, that's not nice. However, I can make it available as an option because I just go to language lists, I go to English and say, okay, English, make it available for interface translation. There's a checkbox. So this saves you from installing the string overrides module, all built into core. So now you can go back to configuration, interface translation, and the add new comment will wait there for you and say English. By the way, we totally revamped this translation interface. It's much easier now in eight. You can actually translate it here. Um, so English filter. And now add new comment, I wanna change to add review. Save. And now, ta-da, here you are. You have add review in English and switch to Hungarian. It was gonna say that whatever I changed it to Hungarian, right? Ta-da. So this is very useful to change whatever you want in core, basically. If you don't like register, you wanna uh, add new, you don't like add new account, you wanna register, you don't like login, you want sign in, whatever, you can change that. It's very easy to touch up on things and fix uh, problems. Sure. Yes, uh, so the question was how do you change this when you have six different comment types? Unfortunately, this example does not scale to that problem um, because this changes it globally. Uh, the example does scale to login and sign in, et cetera. Uh, you would need to have it as a field setting, so the reviews label itself is a field setting. So if you go to fields, then, then that's what I configured as the name of the field. Uh, unfortunately, the add new comment is not yet a field setting. However, uh, when I created this demonstration a month or so ago, I created an issue for that. So hopefully it will be possible to change that sooner or later. So reviews is coming from the field label itself and it should have a field setting that says add, uh, add new review or whatever label for the form, and it should use that. Sure. So, um, so, that's, um, so that's how you do the content types. And then when you translate your nodes, you will end up with multiple versions of this one. So let's say I'm just gonna touch up on this to make it easy for you, Hungarian, save it. And now I have two versions of this node. So if you go to your node admin page, now that has two versions of this one. So it has two Hanabis. It's totally indistinguishable because the name of the game is the same regardless of the language. 
if we want to make, make it distinguishable because they are translations of the same thing, what can we do? We change the page because this page is a view. It's a view. So we go to views and we say we want to have information about the language on our content admin page. So this is admin content, it's a view. It does not tell us the, the language of the content, so we add a field for the language of the translation. Content, translation language, we add that field to all displays. Apply to all displays. And now I have that language information at the end. If we want to make that somewhat nicer, we can rearrange this and move the operations earlier. So what's great about all the views advancements in Drupal 8 is most things are views. So if you look at some, something in the block or look at something in the list, it's very likely it's going to be a view. And then you can just go behind it and change whatever you want. Uh, in this case, I can customize the content admin view to be a uh, translation dashboard and, and um, have people whatever information they want and have people whatever tools they need. So I have a language filter here, which is built into the core view. I can filter it down to only the Hungarian translations and then do whatever I want with that. So that's very flexible and very, re very reusable knowledge to have. So in views, there are two tools for you to use there. There's um, the filtering for languages and there's the rendering of language. So the filter basically decides which language the query is going to filter for. So that's the back end of the view. And then there's a front end of the view is which language the view is going to render this. And there's a lot of options there as well. So you can render the result in the original language of the content that was submitted in or the site default language or a specific language or something. So it's very easy to build views that are like uh, to-do lists for your translators or a translator dashboard like this one where you filter for things that are outdated in a specific language and render them in your language that you can translate to, et cetera. It's very easy to combine those features. So, so what we looked at basically here is all the data that you can do um, is either in your configuration or in your content. If it's in your content, like all your menu items, all your content types, all your comments, then it's fieldable and it's configurable as a translatable entity. So you can one by one translate every field and configure which one you want it translated. So if I don't want a price, I don't want the actual image to be translated, they are kept across translations. And then we've seen that it's possible to touch up on things in the user interface and, and um, make the interface better however we want. And then build views based on the data and get whatever kind of output we want with filters. And then the views could end up in blocks or the main page content block and those blocks we can move around, make separate instances of them and display at different places and use language visibility to hide certain things like as we did with the multilingual menus. We created the menu for two languages and created a separate menu for a third language and hidden them and shown them for separate languages. So I think that really shows that this builds a reusable set of features where you can work with your data, work with your display and use your displays to build your pages in a very flexible way and, um, and only with Drupal core without any contributed modules installed in Drupal 8. Today you can go and start doing this. For small sites like this one, I would encourage you to uh, start now and start building it out and see, um, see what happens. And I think uh, that's it for the session. And if there are any questions, we would love to answer them. Yes, do you want to walk over to the mic? Yeah. Then I don't need to uh, repeat the question. Sorry, that's a sport now. The question was regarding um, your overriding the English string. For instance, uh, review instead of add new comment. Mm -hmm. um, can you give that some kind of context in core so that this only applies to a game node? So Drupal core, um, 
So Drupal core, when it attempts to display add new comment from the form, it does not tell the translation system the context it is coming from. So even if in this interface, in the translation interface, we would be able to provide that context, when it is actually attempted to be used, that context is not provided. So it wouldn't work. Unfortunately, for strings that need context, the only way that's going to work is if developers add that context. Otherwise, we cannot inject it from the outside because we don't know which component and class and plugin and whatever it's coming from and how we would be able to like tell that plugin or something that, hey, you maybe want to use this context. So yes, ideally it would be possible, but technically we have not found a way yet for that. Right. Thanks. Sure. Uh, yes. So the question was, do I recommend this to, in general to change strings or should, should you have a module for it? Um, it's, so there's a lot of work that went into the translation uh, system behind the, the strings. Actually, this week there were performance improvements to make it even faster, so it does not translate anything that does not need to be translated. So replacing strings in English used to be a performance burden because then, then your English pages would start using the translation system. Uh, it's now not that big of a performance burden anymore. That's the first answer. The second answer is um, it's very easy now to take all these customizations and use it somewhere else because all the customizations that you make are uh, tracked as customized translations. So you can take these English uh, customizations and export them um, to your computer. Uh, that's not very uh, big news for English because for English you only tra translated the ones that you needed changed, right? But the same works for Hungarian. So if you want to take that customization that I made for the add new comment Hungarian translation, what Drupal Core does is it protects that customization that I made in this UI for being overwritten from the updates from the community. And it also makes it available for me to export that customization and take it to other sites if I want to clone this site. So it's as good as you can do with a module because uh, built, there's built-in protection for those strings that you entered in this UI. If you don't want that built-in protection, you can turn it off. There's a setting here to, um, to override customized translations or not, but the default setting is that customized translations are kept and they're not overwritten by the community updates and all kinds of imports and stuff that you do. So it's as good as a, as a custom module could be. It has a much better UI to change things. So I don't know if you noticed, but in 7, there was no direct input for interface translation here. And in 8, uh, there is. And what's better is if you have something that uh, has plurals now, you can enter that in, uh, in a plural-friendly way. So it's all, all in place now. You can just translate them. You can make changes, it marks them, so you can go have a coffee and then come back and you still see what you changed and what needs to be saved. I think it's really great to work on this one. Yes, in the back. The question was if this is exportable through CMI or not. No. So the interface translations are not kept in configuration. <clears throat> however, um, however, as I've said, there's a setting here that governs whether the updates actually happen. So for some reason, the setting on this site, and I think it's default, is to never check for updates and never update your strings. So this is a suggested setting for production sites if you want to quality assure your translations, that it would never change your translations on the production site. And uh, on the development side, you can set it to update weekly or monthly or whatever. And then the other good news is that all of these translations that are updated are actually saved in the file system. So you go to your configuration and file system settings, and that's where you configure where they are. So this is in uh, sites default files translations now. And on the production server, this is in CMI, this string, the setting of where the file is. So on the production server, you can set this directory to some place that you manage with Git. And when you push your production stuff, you push up the, the string changes. 
and, uh, and just run a Drush job on the production site when you launch that re-imports those translations. So you can do the updates on the development server, staging server, and on the live server, just um, configure this directory to be a Git repository somewhere and then, then run a Drush import when you, when you push live. And then there's no updates there and there's nothing happening, so you can do the QA this way. Uh, the reason it's not in CMI is a lot of data and we did not figure out how to put that to CMI. The same thing as your uh, aliases are not in CMI, the same problem. We haven't figured out how to put that into configuration. Yes. Hello. 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 Um, this is very similar to entity translation. Uh, when using entity translation previously, we had a lot of issues with uh, modules like workbench moderation, inline entity form, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, is there a set of recommendation to port this kind of modules to Drupal 8 to avoid th those issues? Yes, yes. So there's been so this is very similar to entity translation. Yes, because it's, we ported entity translation to 8. How we made it better is we made all the base fields available, like title, author, publishing status, without extra modules. So all the fields on content are available. Um, why is it going to be better in Drupal 8 than 7 if it was so bad in 7? Good question. The reason it's going to be better is because in 7 it was a contributed module that people did not integrate with. And there was a different core module for content translation that some people integrated with. This contrib module some people integrated with. Almost nobody integrated with both. Um, and there was no migration path between the two of them, at least not both ways. So this, this time, we only have one solution, and it's in core. And the reason we have this solution is because if you check all the boxes, all of them, then it's the same as it was in Drupal 6 or 7, because then all of your fields are translatable, so it's practically a different copy of the content, right? So you can, you can on a scale, reproduce a different solution or the same solution as in 7, but it's always the same APIs and the same infrastructure. So it's one API to integrate with for Contrib, and it's a core API to integrate uh, with. Um, so that's what's going to make it easier to integrate. The best practice is that the API was also reworked under the hood. Um, Francesco Placella is going to have a session or is having a session at this time or something like that, I don't know exactly, about the API behind this. Uh, is much easier to use in 8 because now it defaults to handling the default language of the entity and if you want to get a translation it's just a method call there's no like magic arrays and numbers and keys and stuff that you need to remember that was very painful in 7 to support in 8 it's a method call and then you can work with the translation as a clone of the original entity if it was the original entity same methods, same APIs, etc. so very easy to deal with and support if your module does not care about translations at all, then your module is always going to work with the default original language submission version of the entity and not do anything with the translations usually. That's the idea. So it's not gonna break anything, but it's not gonna work with them. But, but again, the, the reason we think it's gonna be better is it's one solution in core and it's scalable to all requirements that we've seen in seven. So it's going to be better and easier to integrate with. In fact, uh, in, in 8 core, the search module uh, uh, makes all the translations appear as separate results, the core search module, although not a lot of people use the core search module. However, if you use whatever country module, the search APIs also expose them as separate uh, ones. So we have all of that information exposed to, we have it in the entity access API views, uh, node access, et cetera. All of those are exposed in those APIs as well, so people um, interfacing with those APIs will um, need to or should integrate with language support as well. Anything else? If not, then, again, Friday we're gonna sprint here, and there's mentors available for you to help get started. If you've never sprinted, you should come anyway. Mentor is going to help you get started work on things. And if you feel comfortable, then uh, just feel free to come to our, to our sprint. I will be at the sprint as well as several other people from the multilingual team. And we have tasks for anyone. We have tasks for usability testing, documentation writing, demo updating, whatever you want. Uh, slideshow translations, all kinds of things. 
So we have, uh, we have um, tasks for everyone, and there is a sprint announced for translating Drupal 8 to your own language as well. Uh, but uh, you'll need to be able to find other people who are also translating to that language, so that's not that easy. We'll try to figure out some process for that on Friday so people find each other easier. But now is also the time to start looking at translating Drupal 8 because there's not going to be a lot of time before it's out, hopefully, and you want to get your translations there sooner than later. So uh, that's it for us. If you liked the session or if you did not like the session, please uh, provide feedback on the conference site. There's a feedback form on each session, and then you can provide the feedback there. Please do so we can improve in the future. We can make things better. The conference is better. We'll be better, uh, and everybody's going to be happy. Uh, thanks for coming, and see you around at the conference.